Uh, last February, when I convened and led a meeting of top federal officials and the nation's governors uh, in Washington to learn more about the potential threat of a new novel coronavirus, um, that briefing was led by then CDC director, Dr. Robert Redfield. And I got the chance to work together with him throughout the uh, pandemic. When uh, we met here in Annapolis in January, shortly before he left office, I was pleased to hear uh, that he planned to return home here to Maryland, where he co-founded the University of Maryland's Institute of Human Virology and served as the Chief of Infectious Diseases and as Vice Chair of Medicine at the University of Maryland School of Medicine. And we began uh, discussions which resulted in our announcement today that Dr. Redfield has agreed to join our team and to serve as Senior Advisor for Public Health, uh, where he will advise us on a wide range of immediate priorities, including planning our response to the coronavirus uh, variants, um, our COVID-19 vaccine campaign, and our science-based plan for uh, fully and safely reopening our state, as well as uh, all areas of public health. From the very beginning of this crisis, I have always emphasized how important it is to follow the science and to get the best advice from the medical experts. And we're very fortunate to have such a renowned expert as Dr. Redfield, um, th that he has returned to Maryland and that he's agreed to join our world-class team of doctors and public health experts. And with that, I'm happy to turn the podium over to Dr. Redfield. Well, thank you very much, Governor. Uh, it's great to return to Maryland and to be able to continue to contribute and serve as a member of your team. Over the last year, I had the opportunity to observe uh, the COVID response and many, actually all the states in our nation. And I do want to say this again, Governor Hogan, I want to congratulate you for your effective leadership, which I really think has been a model for our nation. Uh, I want to also just take a moment to encourage all Marylanders to get vaccinated when it is their turn. Vaccines are the most important gift of science to modern medicine. And today we have three approved COVID vaccines, the Pfizer, Moderna, and now the J&J. &J. All three of these vaccines are highly effective in preventing serious disease, hospitalization, and death. Yesterday, I had the opportunity to visit the M&T Bank Stadium vaccination site, and it was very impressive. But what was most important to me was seeing one individual after another embrace vaccine with confidence. I want to encourage all Marylanders and all Americans to embrace vaccine with confidence and not leave it on the shelf for yourself, your family, or your community. This single act will help save lives, and it will allow you to do your part to helping us all bring this pandemic to an end. And finally, Governor, again, I want to thank you for giving me an opportunity to serve. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, Maryland begins the uh, month of March with more of our kids going back to school, more businesses reopening and expanding, and with far fewer people getting infected and hospitalized. Over the last eight weeks, our positivity rate has dropped by more than 67% to 3.35%, which is the lowest level since October 25th. Our case rate per 100,000 has dropped by more than 75% to 13.1, uh, which is also the lowest rate since uh, late October. We went from all 24 of our counties being in the uh, federal red zone for case rates to now having zero counties in the red zone. Our hospitalizations have dropped from nearly 2,000 to uh, fewer than 900 for the first time since early November. 
The number of nursing homes with active cases has dropped by 57% since the peak in mid-December. Yesterday, we hit a critical milestone with more than 40% of Marylanders ages 65 and over having been vaccinated, one of the very first states in America to hit this mark. Maryland uh, providers have now administered 1,362,758 vaccines, including 250,110 uh, just over the last seven days. We're now averaging a new record of 35,730 shots per day, an increase of more than 1,100%. Uh, we've administered 97.8% of all of the first doses we have received, and 86.4% of all doses that we have received from the federal government. Friday's FDA approval of a third safe and effective vaccine is quite literally providing an immediate shot in the arm for Maryland and the rest of the country. And it was made possible by the groundbreaking cooperation uh, uh, between leading medical experts and pharmaceutical companies as part of the uh, uh, process that Dr. Robert Redfield oversaw and led at the CDC. Uh, this single-dose Johnson & Johnson vaccine is being manufactured right here in Maryland at the Emergent Biosolutions facility in East Baltimore. Uh, for more than a month, I've been pushing uh, the White House to get uh, other uh, manufacturers to help with the production of some of the approved vaccines. And I was pleased to uh, uh, here on a, uh, White House officials this morning on a call with the governors uh, that Merck will now uh, be helping to produce Johnson & Johnson vaccines, which is something that we've been pushing for. Uh, Maryland is receiving an initial allocation of 49,600 of uh, Johnson & Johnson. These doses will be deployed across the state this week, including to mass vaccination sites, hospitals, community health centers, pharmacies, and local health departments. Providers will begin to receive their shipments of Johnson & Johnson as early as today. I want to caution, uh, Marylanders, that this is only an initial allocation. The federal government uh, shipped the entire inventory that it has on hand. And this morning on the call with White House officials, they informed us that no Johnson & Johnson vaccine at all will be shipped next week or the week after that. Um, that uh, they're promising that by the 18th, we will be getting another shipment. Uh, I can assure you that whatever supply we are able to receive, we are ready to immediately deploy and to get into the arms of Marylanders. Uh, White House officials assured governors today that they are working to increase the supply of all vaccines uh, by the end of March and throughout April and May, which will enable us to accelerate the expansion of our state-run mass vaccination sites. This week, uh, the mass vaccination site at Six Flags America in Prince George's County will double uh, from 2,000 to more than 4,000 shots per day. The mass vaccination site at M&T Bank Stadium in Baltimore City will ramp up ahead of schedule this week to doing 2,000 shots per day. Uh, with the M&T Bank site now operational, the Baltimore Convention Center mass vaccination site will uh, now expand its focus and will prioritize underserved communities in Baltimore City. Uh, and we will also see more than a 100% increase uh, from 400 to more than 1,000 shots per day. The Southern Maryland mass vaccination site uh, at the Blue Crab Stadium in Charles County will now open uh, this Thursday, March 4th, which is one week ahead of schedule. Uh, initial appointment slots will be made available starting this evening. The Eastern Shore Mass Vaccination Site at the Wicomico Youth and Civic Center in Salisbury uh, will open no later than Thursday, March 18th. And uh, Tidal Health has been selected as the clinical par uh, partner for this Eastern Shore site. We have finalized site acquisition on the uh, Western Maryland mass vaccination site, which uh, will be located at the premium outlets in Hagerstown, and which will open by the end of this month. 
uh, Meritus Hospital will be the clinical partner for the Western Maryland site. This will give us at least one max, mass vaccination site in every region of the state, uh, which can administer thousands of shots per day. In addition, state health and emergency management officials are in active discussions with several uh, other counties that have expressed interest in partnering on additional state mass vaccination sites. A expanding the hours, the capacity, volume, and the number of mass vaccination sites is all contingent on future increases in supply from the federal government. Uh, with this week's incremental increase in supply, we were able to increase our allocations to providers all across the state. This week, both hospitals and local health departments received increases in their allocations. Uh, this includes increases in the allocated doses of Pfizer and Moderna, and each local health department and community health center will also receive an initial allocation of Johnson & Johnson. Uh, but once again, the federal government is not able to ship any Johnson & Johnson uh, vaccine for the next two weeks. Um, we have advised the hospitals and local health departments that we are prepared to consider further increases to their vaccine allocations in future weeks if they are able to utilize them. Uh, providers will be required to administer all of the doses that they receive within one week of delivery in order to be prioritized for an increase in allocation. The goal here is to get the vaccine uh, from the federal government deployed out immediately and into the arm of a person who needs it. Doses cannot be allowed to sit on shelves or in freezers while hundreds of thousands of people are desperately trying to schedule an appointment for a vaccine. If any provider is unable to meet this standard of utilizing doses in the same week that they are received, state health officials will work with them to either transfer their doses or to pause their allocation shipments until they're able to catch up. Um, our expanding statewide network now includes 2,381 distribution points. And following both the federal and state vaccination plans, uh, we intend to continue to broaden this distribution network to ensure as many points of access as possible in every single county with an infrastructure capable of doing up to 100,000 shots per day just as soon as they are uh, made by the manufacturers and are allocated to us by the federal government. Uh, you can find a list of providers in your area at covidvax.maryland.gov. And for residents without internet access, the COVID-19 Vaccination Support Center is available seven days a week at 1-855-MD-GOVAX. Uh, uh, we have now vaccinated more than 40% of our eligible population, including many of our most vulnerable uh, Marylanders. However, I know how frustrating this is for the many other people who are currently eligible and cannot yet schedule appointments because there are no vaccines available for them. Uh, the pace of uh, daily vaccination is hitting a new high every day. A third safe and effect effective vaccine is now available. Uh, a next potential fourth vaccine is in phase three clinical trials, which is also being made right here in Maryland at Novavax in Gaithersburg. And we're using every tool at our disposal to get shots into arms and we will not rest until a vaccine is available to every single Marylander who wants one so that we can bring this pandemic to an end once and for all. With that, I'd be happy to take a few questions. Yeah, well, I'm uh, concerned about some of those uh, reports, and we're, you know, we're trying to do the best job we can. We're trying to get to the bottom of it. As of today, um, I think we're at, we've uh, done more than 28 other states. Uh, number of vaccines, we're 22nd. I'd rather be number one. Um, you know, we have discussions with the White House and the CDC. One thing I think that is causing a problem, we couldn't figure out how we had done 99.7% of all the uh, doses we had, and yet we were somehow showing up lower in a ranking of uh, percentages of allocations uh, used. And um, we're still trying to get to the bottom of it with the White House and the CDC, but apparently there are about 230,000 doses uh, that the federal government has sent to federal agencies 
where they've only utilized maybe 60,000 of them, and they were being counted as coming to Maryland, but we had no control over them. But we're trying to get to the bottom of it. We're trying to do the best we can. As I said, we've utilized just about every single one we have, and uh, we're doing uh, the best we can, and we're doing better than most states. Well, the question last week was about, uh, you know, the, the mayor had said that the somehow that the city was getting less than, their, than they should have been allocated. And my comment was simply a factual one, saying that uh, the city actually had a higher allocation. Uh, they had the number one allocation as opposed to they were the fourth highest population, but they received the most allocation. Uh, but look, I know there are concerns about the way it was misinterpreted. We've been very focused on equity. That's uh, why we uh, made some announcements very early on. We appointed General Burkhead to head up a task force. We asked all of the, our local partners, particularly in Baltimore City and Prince George's County, to uh, work with us on an equity plan. It's why we announced our, our equity effort uh, with all of the leaders in Baltimore City about a month ago. It's, it's why we set up two mass vaccination sites there. It's why I just said we're making the convention center focused on Baltimore City residents. Uh, General Burkhead and uh, Lieutenant Governor were in Baltimore City at churches this weekend. We're going to continue to go into the community. Um, we've done far better than most other uh, states in the country with respect to that, but it's not good enough. And that's why we're this Thursday, uh, General Burkhead is going to, we're going to have a press conference where we lay out a very uh, detailed uh, plan, on a, an operational uh, logistics plan, a statewide plan on uh, on equity, uh, and it's going to be the first one in America, and we'll, we're going to continue to work on that problem. My comments were factual. Well, first, let me just uh, uh, say that I was uh, very proud of uh, Dr. Redfield's leadership at the CDC. It's where under, under his leadership, uh, he was in, on, on the uh, Operation Warp Speed uh, board that, that uh, made these incredible accomplishments that are enabling us to save lives right now. Uh, under the CDC guidance is what we followed throughout the entire pandemic and the great advice that they promulgated. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and defend everything that the president said or did. Or, or relitigate the past, and I'm not, sh I'm not sure Dr. Redfield wants to do that either, but um, I, don't, I don't think most of that uh, criticism was ever directed at him or any of the, his leadership of that agency, which I, I think I'm, you know, very proud of. I don't know if you want to respond, Bob. I would just echo, echo that I uh, continue to be proud of uh, the CDC and uh, the men and women there. I think uh, uh, contrary to what some people uh, used as the storyboard, I think it remains the most premier public health agency in the world. We generated literally, you know, thousands of pages of recommendations to the American public, of which they accessed uh, li literally millions and millions, and I think in some of the records almost billions of times. So uh, I'm proud of what we did. We did put science first. Uh, I am, if anything, that I was disappointed of during my time at CDC was the inconsistency of messaging. Um, and clearly, uh, it's really important in public health, and you all are so fortunate with Governor Hogan to have that public health m message echoed by civic leaders. Uh, and we stood for that. Uh, and. Uh, across the country. Unfortunately, there were a number of civic leaders that didn't echo the public health message. But I stand by the time I led the agency. I think we uh, 
again, this was the greatest public health crisis in this nation for over a century. And I think we uh, did respond in a manner which helped advance the efforts to get this pandemic under control. I wouldn't describe it as a reprieve because they would say, hey, we really want to get some more, but <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, they, I, there's not a whole lot of detail. It's simply that it takes a while to ramp up production. Uh, because we were so desperately in need of vaccines, they simply pushed out. They've been manufacturing these for many months, waiting for the approval, and then they just shipped out every single one they had in the one week. And now they have to catch back up again, and uh, they just wouldn't have any more. The next shipment won't come for another 18 days. We, um, yes, uh, just recently we worked together with, uh, the, under a federal program uh, that for the long-term care facilities that uh, the uh, Walgreens and CBS uh, had a large supply, more than they needed, and we worked together with them in a partnership just as of Friday. Uh, as of Friday, we uh, got back from them about 25,000 doses, which we're going to be able to reallocate to others. It was not that they were not doing a good job. It was that they had more than they needed after getting out and doing all the clinics across the state. And they were, um, they were you know, it's rather than sitting in a freezer, we're now sending them out to somebody that's going to put them in somebody's arm in the next few days. Governor, I wanted to ask you, as someone who's been chairman of the uh, National Governors Association during the time of pandemic and knows the significance of that role, given what's happening in New York with a Governor Cuomo, do you think he should step down from that position? Look, I think um, obviously these are serious allegations uh, against uh, the governor, and uh, they need to be looked into. There's no question about that. Um, these um, these uh, women who've come forward have to be listened to, and we have to find out. Uh, but I, there's been no discussion. Uh, governor Cuomo led the call today with the White House and all the governors. I've had no discussion with any other governors about what, what his role in the NGA should be. Um, I think we'll wait and see how this uh, thing progresses. You know, there's uh, lots of emergency contracts. They all go before the Board of Public Works. They've all been unanimously approved so far. Um, Ernest & Young is helping in a number of respects, helping with the data, the issue that we just talked about. They helped us identify where the extra doses were, how many the long-term care facilities needed, where could we claw them back and reallocate, who's doing a better job of actually uh, getting the doses in arms. They identified this problem with the federal government where they – there were a couple of hundred thousand doses they were showing on our website that we knew nothing about, that we have no control over, that we're now trying to get the White House and, and the uh, CDC to fix. So uh, Ernest Young is earning their keep. They're helping us find uh, potentially tens of thousands of doses that we can now ut maybe utilize, uh, and uh, we're very pleased with their services. Governor, Well, I understand. I completely understand uh, the frustration. I'm frustrated. Everyone up here is frustrated. Everyone at the White House is frustrated. Everyone in America is frustrated. There are about a million people who are currently eligible for the vaccine who we cannot schedule for a vaccine. Um, but it's not about a website or a process. It's about the fact that there aren't any vaccines. So I know how frustrating it is, and everybody wants a quick fix. But the bottom line is you can't schedule vaccines for vaccines that don't exist. 
Uh, and so we're all working. I'm, I, I, it's certainly not a perfect process by any means, but yes, I'm convinced that everyone's uh, you know, working as hard as they can and that uh, we've got as good or better a process than anybody else in the country. We just found out about this in the White House, and the CDC can't really give us answers on it. So we don't have any more information than I gave you other than Thursday night. This appeared on our website. We didn't know what they were. And they said they think they belong to five different federal agencies, but they weren't sure. And they're going to get back to us. And we have another meeting, I think, tomorrow scheduled with them to try to get to the bottom of it. What do you say sent to? Do you mean in a we don't, we don't know exactly, but they allocated them to Maryland, but they did not send them to us. Well, we've been working on it uh, throughout the entire effort. We were the first, I think, state in America to start tracking race. We were the first ones to focus on that in an equity effort on testing. And we're the first ones in America to work on a statewide plan. So it's not only now or we're behind. We've known this has been an issue. But we just, you know, now we're getting the vaccines and we're, tr we're seeing how it's working and how it's not working and how we can improve. And, and it's improving every week. Um, Prince George's County, for example, is, uh, you know, we, we sent the National Guard, we opened up multiple centers, we've gone into the community, we've pushed more pharmacies, and we've had a 250% increase uh, just in the past week. So we're going to continue to try to make improvements, and we're going to do the same thing in Baltimore City. Last question. Secretary, you've been mentioning about the vaccine and mentioned yesterday, well, we made a great effort in that regard, and um, General Burkhead will talk a lot more about that on Thursday. She's been working daily with uh, with Prince George's County and Baltimore City, and uh, they've taken a great many steps already, but they're going to take even more. We'll let you know.